Based on scientists' estimates, this is what people will look like by 2100. A thick skull, a small brain, a permanently bent elbow, a double set of eyelids, evolution. You can't escape it. Seems like this process is totally random, but you can use it for your own purposes, just like the anteaters. What is the advantage of having teeth? Well, you know, chewing, grinding food, biting. Most mammals do it. For them, giving up teeth equals giving up food, and the result is quite predictable. But the anteaters somehow lost their teeth and survived. It's hard to believe that someone can give up teeth on their own accord. When you look at the cost of a dentist's services and think that perhaps your teeth are good as they are, that's one thing. Anteaters didn't have that problem, probably. Actually, scientists still can't say with absolute certainty how anteaters lost their teeth. These are very ancient animals whose ancestors were roaming the earth 66 million years ago. Well, not exactly roaming. It's believed that for a long time, anteaters lived exclusively in trees until one day, <clears throat> until one day they descended to the ground. Perhaps it was at that time that they spotted ancient anthills or termite mounds, which were quite numerous back then, and the anteaters decided to taste those funny little insects. One should note that the ancestors of the anteaters still had teeth. Their closest relatives, sloths and armadillos, preserved them, but the anteaters decided they could do without these silly things in the mouth. Instead, they've grown incredibly long tongues. No, really, the tongue length of the giant anteater can reach 18 inches. This is more than the screen size of some laptops. Using such a tongue, the anteater can easily penetrate deep into the anthill or termite bound, though insects are usually not happy with such an intrusion. Of course, none of them want to be eaten, so the anteaters had to upgrade their tongues. They're not only long, they have an unusual shape and are very stretchy. They're also covered with mucus. Any ant sticks to the tongue like a fly to the sticky ribbon. If this is not enough for some reason and the prey breaks free, then sharp thorns that cover the tongue come into play. In fact, these are just folded back papillae, but for small insects. They work like cactus spines. You can't get away. Okay, everything is clear when it comes to the tongue, but how do you chew with no teeth? Or what, ants and termites are so soft they can be swallowed whole? Don't check unless you're an anteater. After catching prey with their tongue, they press it against the palate and then push it further. The stomach of the giant anteater, similar to that of a bird, has hard folds and uses strong contractions to grind insects. In addition, the giant anteater cannot produce stomach acid on its own, so it uses the formic acid of its prey for digestion. Yeah, it digests ants using ants. Now that is out of line. As I said, bird stomachs work in a similar way. To boost their digestion, birds swallow stones. I wonder what the first bird that came up with this idea thought. This beetle is too hard. I better swallow this cobblestone afterwards. But this method works. Small stones in the stomach rub against each other and crush food. Over time, they become smoother and more round from constant grinding, stop doing what they're supposed to, and the birds simply get rid of them. In any of the two ways that come to mind. Anteaters do something similar, only instead of stones, they swallow a small amount of sand and soil. Why waste time picking out fleeing insects from the soil? Eat it all together. I agree, it doesn't sound very tasty, but the absence of teeth and an unusual tongue gave the anteaters another strange feature. They practically don't have a sense of taste. Those backward bent papillae, which look like spines, contain taste buds, and they're not sensitive, so to speak. Most likely, taste buds, like everything else in the body of the anteater, simply adapted to the weird diet consisting of insects, soil, sand, and other stuff that could hardly be considered a pinnacle of cooking art. Yeah, an anteater would never become a chef. On the other hand, it wouldn't fit under a chef's hat anyway. Whoa! That's strangely involuntary! <laughs> and then I thought, why do we need taste buds at all? Wouldn't it be easier if we couldn't identify different tastes and could eat anything? Perhaps our life would be better, though not very long. The key purpose of taste buds is not to argue with your friends about whether normal people can drink tomato juice and eat pineapple pizza. The ability to taste is closely related to safety as it allows animals to distinguish between normal and unhealthy food and determine its nutritional value. Everything is quite simple. If food seems tasteless, bitter, and overall disgusting, it's better to spit it out not to die of poisoning, and vice versa. It's interesting how it works with sweet foods. When we taste them, the body realizes it's eating something rich in calories, so it gives it a green light. Have you ever wondered why children love sweets so much? 
Yes, many of us find it difficult to refuse candy or the last, definitely the last piece of chocolate cake, but kids are the candy-eating champions. It starts in childhood. A study by the University of Washington confirms that newborn babies prefer sweet scents over others. It looks like it's an evolutionary carryover. In ancient times, long before civilization emerged, children who preferred high-calorie foods were more likely to survive, and the sweeter the food, the more calories it contains. Ants, of course, are hardly sweet. If you were curious enough as a child, then you probably tried to eat formic acid. It is damn sour. So how many ants does one anteater need to eat? According to the calculations of scientists, the animal eats up to 35,000 insects per day. 35,000! It's roughly a few anthills or something like that. A huge truck of ants. But anteaters are not that gluttonous. On average, an ant weighs up to 5 milligrams. Let's say that anteaters choose larger insects weighing 10 milligrams. Turns out they eat only about 350 grams of ants per day. That's two large McDonald's fries plus sauce. Well, plus some soil. Was it worth descending from the trees and losing teeth millions of years ago? Actually, it was. Insects contain more than double the protein per 100 grams than meat and fish, especially when it comes to ants. 100 grams can contain up to 77 grams of protein. It's the most nutritious food on the planet. Besides, you won't have to fight for it with competitors. When you're a six and a half foot tall anteater, who can take away your prey? Birds that eat insects too? Mice? Also, ants and termites, unlike larger creatures, cannot fight back when anteaters try to eat them. They are trying, of course. Termites mostly rely on their giant, solid-walled termite mounds. While the anteater is making its way through these defensive structures, the colony may have enough time to escape somewhere deeper. Ants cannot boast of similar architectural acumen, so they're looking for other ways to escape. It's unlikely that at least one insect on this planet can do as much as ants can. For example, ants can catapult when things get really nasty. This ability is found in Odontomachus, ants with powerful jaws that help them bounce off a predator. Well, it usually works in open spaces and against ant lions. Perhaps that's for the best. Most ants prefer more old-school methods of defense and just bite. Anteaters' coat is too thick and dense for bites to harm them. But if you eat ice cream and it pinches your tongue, you'll most likely be upset. So anteaters do not like it when their prey begins to fight back. And so they act fast, or rather very fast, and they finish their lunch faster than soldiers arrive to the battlefield. The feast lasts about a minute. During that time, the anteater manages to slip its tongue into the anthill about 160 times, more than two times per second. Try sticking out and hiding your tongue at that speed. Keep in mind that the human tongue is on average six times shorter than the tongue of an anteater. To get its 350 grams of food, the anteater visits about 200 anthills per day, but does not destroy any of them. Perhaps because it simply does not have time to do it in a minute, or maybe the reason is that anteaters are much smarter than they seem. If you destroy an anthill, then you can't get food from it in the future. But if you just have a quick snack, the colony will recover, and you can check here again in a few days. But not everyone is capable of such logical reasoning. Many predators can easily exterminate all the herbivores they hunt and do not even wonder what they will eat in the future. They eat food while it's there, but this does not mean that no animals, except for humans and anteaters, can plan their actions in advance. The California scrub jay can plan ahead and hide its food. If in a certain place at a certain time the bird didn't have enough food, it tries to put something edible there. Well, just in case it gets hungry next time. Jays also hide food in stashes to diversify their diet. However, birds also collect and store different bright objects, although there's no point in them. But we'll talk about this another time. See you later!